Daji is looking to torture you so that she can get ahead. Let's talk about this. Hello there everyone, it's me, Celtic, your Smite Professor, here today to talk about the basics on how to play and build Daji within Smite. Let's talk about abilities. Starting with Daji's passive, basically whenever Daji is going to deal damage with basic attacks, the enemy that they're hitting is going to take the base damage from the basic attack and then additional bleed damage afterwards. Now, for Daji's first ability, it's going to augment Daji's next basic attack. Basically, this new enhanced basic attack is going to deal a burst of damage and apply another dot on enemies, which is going to deal more damage. On top of this, the enemy hit by the empowered auto attack is also going to be slowed. The only other thing of note here is, besides being a really good auto attack cancel tool, this ability causes Daji to not be affected by the movement speed penalty until Daji hits someone with this empowered auto attack. For Daji's second ability, she does damage out in this giant cone four times. Each swipe does base damage and applies Daji's passive. Now, here's what's fun. Daji gains increased movement speed, Daji gains slow immunity, Daji gains knockup immunity. Further to this, and this is by far the most interesting part of this ability, everything attacking Daji from behind her, so where the tails are, is going to cause up to 40% damage mitigation at max rank. This is a really good defensive spell. This is the ability that we max first. It is your most damage through early game. And then in the late game, it actually gets you killed, but more on that later. Now, Daji's third ability is a dash of sorts. Basically, you are going to lock on to an ally or an enemy. This can be minions, gods, what have you. And then you are going to teleport to that location. Once you're at that location, you will deal damage to everything in a circle around where you teleported to, and you can follow up, do whatever you want. The most important part of this ability that you need to understand is you can freely transform your camera to dictate where you're going to end up at the target location. If you start channeling this ability and then do a quick 180 on your mouse or your sticks, whatever you're using, you are going to end up in a different spot than if you simply just cast this ability. Keep that in mind. Now for Daji's ult, we have another beads burning ultimate. Daji is going to go up on this magical little totem pole and throw out three different circle attacks. Enemies that are caught in the circles are going to be chained to the totem pole. When Daji cancels this ability or after the third shot is fired, she's then going to have the option to jump down. As she jumps down, enemies that are chained are pulled to the totem where they are then going to be stunned and take damage. Now, what's important to note here is unlike Ares ultimate where as long as they are not CC immune at the end of the channel, they get pulled, Anything that goes crowd control immune at any point after they've been chained can no longer be chained during this ultimate cast. You cannot wait out the beads and then rechain them, that's not how the ability works. So now that we get the basics on how to play Daji, here's the basics on how to build Daji. She likes power, she likes cooldown reduction, this is something that does that. Now, here's your role as Daji. In the early game, as you farm up your camps and get your experience, most of your damage is going to come out of your second ability. As you transition to the late game, your second ability gets you killed because you are a really easy to hit target. Your burst damage comes from your ability to auto attack cancel. You can auto lock onto someone with your third ability, land, auto attack, auto attack cancel right into the first ability. You deal a ton of damage and realistically kill them. After that combo, however, you are what we call a sitting duck, and you're going to want to hit your four key in order to get up on the totem pole where you can then look to pull people in, finish a kill, whatever the hell you need to do. Just make sure you get up in the air so that they don't kill you. Now, the couple other notes I have here are all related to the ultimate again. In the air, you do not need to hit someone to have the full effect. If you are in danger and you are low on HP and you need to get out, use your ultimate, make sure you have the blink relic, and then if you don't use any chains and wait out the duration, you can cancel this ability, what have you, and then you'll be out of combat, you can land and immediately blink away. The other note I have about the ultimate is you don't need to fire all three chains. You know how you can catch people off guard in this game? You do something they don't expect. 
make sure you hit that first chain, hit them fast, immediately cancel this ability and pull them in. You are likely going to pull them in before they even have time to react and use their beads relic. It is really fun, give it a try. And that's really all I can say about the alt. And that's all I can say about Dodgy as a whole. If you like this video, subscribe to this channel. I wanna make your smite experience a wee bit better. If you liked this, you'll probably like this video too. Click on it now and I'll see you there to explain it. Otherwise, have yourselves a casual day and I will see you in the next video. Take care.